Hello everybody. Welcome to my next demonstration and I have decided to do a tree. It's a very popular subject. So first of all, make sure you have got your eyes covered for, for protection from the dust, but also to help you see nice and clearly. So some headband magnifiers, if you think you need them, I certainly do. Um, and that makes it easier to see and not strain your eyes. Um, Sharpie, um, a permanent Sharpie. So I have used this to scribble a very simple tree onto the glass. It's a tree of no particular make. <laughs> it's my own made up tree. Yeah, I have a rather grubby little white Arkansas soft stone and I am roughly going over what I have sketched, but not exactly. As I say, roughly. That sketch was just a visual for me to get an idea of what the positioning and, and what effect it might have. So I am now just outlining something very simple along the lines of my sketch, roughly. Um, I will change it as I go along, um, add a little bit, ignore some bits. I may add in something later. Um, it doesn't matter. It's just something that sort of is going to hang together nicely. Right, that all done. Um, and now you can wipe off um, the marker a little bit. I'm not wiping it all off at the moment. It doesn't really matter. It'll all come off eventually. So you can see now I've taken away the white um, background. We've got the dark background so that you can see the engraving much, much easier. Time to turn on the water and grab a nice big diamond burr. And um, the water, obviously, as I've always said, this lubricates the diamond and ensures an easier cut into the glass. So because this is a tree of no particular make, <laughs> I'm making up my own kind of bark effects um, and I am just going up and down and light and deepish and um, just slightly varied, just filling in the area with lots of texture. This is not a, a smooth thing. There's, a, there's texture thrown in. Um, the glass is not the thickest. Um, it is a good quality glass. So it's nice and soft, but it's not the thickest. So I'm not going that deep but it will be deep enough to show some ridges. So I am putting in the thicker uh, branches from the trunk. I've got to tell you at this point, this little glass was incredibly noisy. It's funny that because normally it's the great big vases that get noisy with a big diamond like that. But this little one, my word. Um, right. So I've used the larger diamond and I'm just just for fun just running a rubber over the top um, quickly. I'm not impressed with this drill as I have said before. I'm still working from home at the moment so I'm about to move everything back to the workshop but this particular drill is not great and that big rubber was bouncing around a bit so I've put another rubber into the drill. Uh, and this bullet rubber, um, also available, of course, at um, Eternal Tools and is also included in my um, glass engraving starter kit. So it's just picking up some of the top ridges. Um, and we'll be doing so much more to that trunk anyway, but it was just to give you an idea that there's, it's not going to just be white, we're going to put some interest into it. So now I've taken a slightly smaller diamond burr and I am just filling in um, it's an interesting branch yes uh, <laughs> these branches don't do it too quickly be deliberate with them place them deliberately um, imagine that they have a life um, and they have wild life that depends on them. Um, make sure they join. 
make sure they um, hang together nicely. And I'll tell you who used to say this, um, is, is the late Bob Ross, the painter. He used to say how, how the little squirrels would, would be running along there. I think I've mentioned it before, but I used to absolutely love watching his painting lessons. Um, yeah, so make sure your little branches, each one is deliberately placed. So using this, if I feel that I need to thicken up um, any part of the already wide uh, branch or trunk, I will just use this over the edge because sometimes as you're going along and you are engraving a branch, you might get a little bit thick nearer the top and you think, whoa, whoa that looks a bit odd because you don't want the top of the branch or the end of the branch to be thicker than, than the previous part of it. So you really need to go back and make um, the original area of the branch thicker so that it looks right. Um, obviously it's going thinner and thinner as it travels to the end. Um, placing uh, branches randomly in front or behind each other. Um, this is just a gnarly old tree probably in winter. In winter because you need a nice warm winter drink um, and that is what I believe this little vessel is. You can make a really nice Irish coffee in it. Um, I actually just, I had it, I've had it um, for quite a while um, in stock and uh, nobody was particularly interested in buying it. Some obviously not not trendy at the moment anyway give it a little bit of a wipe with a lovely soft cloth that's very absorbent and um, just so that I can have a, a quick squiz as to how it's looking um, that's looking quite nice as you can see I have got the branches coming round to the front as well so around the back and run to the front just for a bit of fun. Um, right, we are actually working, I'm working on the back of it um, effectively at the moment. I think it's the back of it anyway, I, because you've, well, it's the back if you're right-handed and you, you're looking, picking it up and looking it through, through that way. <laughs> it doesn't really matter which way you look at it, I suppose. So on with some more branches and as I say going slightly deeper if I want a branch to be in front of the other one I'll make it um, slightly deeper. It's a very simple subject to do. You can take a glass and, and just make a whole forest going around it. I have done that so many times. Um, or a block of optical crystal or something like that or a colour of lead crystal and just lots and lots of um, trees. There's something very peaceful about them, very wise about them. Now I remember as I was engraving this I was looking at that thinking well that branch is a little bit too thick where I drew it with the uh, white Arkansas. And um, of course, once you have put your little white Arkansas, you've got to make sure that you have, you make use of that um, that little stroke. Having said that, this is a tree. You can actually keep on going. Even at the end of this video, you can you can still keep adding many, many more little branches, bigger branches, whatever. And um, there's no such thing as a mistake when it comes to something like this. Except, as I say, you don't want um, the branch thicker on the end. I see I've come down the trunk again because I'm sort of getting the feeling that my branches at the top are a little bit too thick for the, for the trunk. Um, and the 
water dripping and spraying everywhere as usual. I had to wipe my camera lens again. Sometimes it hits the camera lens. I think that was mainly the big, um, the big burr, of course. But a little, little worrying to see that. <laughs> see the dust coming off that's why it's so important with to have your water and a mask and because this is being engraved at home I don't have my big dust extractor but as long as you have a good mask and um, we all have probably many more masks in <laughs> in the house than we used to that's for sure with the old coronavirus thing And that branch coming nicely down over. You can see I've left a little dark gap underneath it. That's going to be like a hole in the tree. Um, right, now I've got a small-ish diamond burr. And I'm going, it's sort of next size down, sort of. Um, it may not be the next actual size down in, in a catalogue, but it's just another size down from the previous burr, just to carry on further along the branches as they get thinner. And as I say, of course, I make it up as I go along. Lots of little tiny branches and if you wanted to you could go on from here with say a uh, rat's tail which is obviously very very fine and add teeny tiny little twigs um, from the ends of all of these branches. Um, you, could, you can really have fun with it. I haven't done that for this particular piece trying to keep it simple um, so you can get a good idea of what's going on right giving it a dry um, and you can see there's lots more happening here now see I haven't put the tree directly um, in the middle of the back I've put it slightly to the left just for an added interest you've got the handle on the right and the tree just slightly offset which is rather fun and then of course the branch coming around from that side it's funny because <laughs> I will have spatters on my headband magnifier and um, <laughs> I see there's a tiny little line there which I haven't gone over you saw it a little bit earlier on and um, I wonder if I pick it up actually <laughs> so I can see it now but I have a feeling um, do I see it oh I've seen it yes I saw it here we go so right I've obviously got a white, white Arkansas now um, this is not the diamond this is a white Arkansas soft stone and I am putting a inst an instant half tone into those branches and I am adding more spindly little bits on the end which are already a half tone and again you can you can make so many more of these little things but I didn't in this case um, but as I say this is doing um, this is having a little half tone effect on the branches without making them a solid 
colour. We're not making it a solid colour. This is a rough and ready, gnarly old thing. Um, so it's got lots of t texture and um, different shades of bark. So we're coming further down um, into the heavy part of the tree now um, and I'm literally, I'm, I'm barely even thinking about this actually, it's just running over the edges a little bit where um, the sort of upper surfaces, um, you, can, you can already see a little bit of texture going on and it's just adding, um, as I say, another, another tone and I will um, Get a rubber to that again as well. We want lots and lots of texture and tone. If you want to, to engrave a particular type of tree, then have a jolly good look at the formation of the bark and how, for example, the oak um, is a sort of like, um, I don't even know how to describe it, it's, it's sort of rub rough upright um, sort of block effects and it's it's really interesting but this is just made up It's always good to keep wiping it and have, have a little look. You can see a bit of the depth where I've got the tree in the back, on the, on the back of the glass. You can see um, it's deep-ish, but I haven't made it too deep, as I say, because the glass is not that thick. Right, what have I got here? Ah, I've decided it's already time to put my name, even though I haven't finished the glass, but <laughs> sometimes I do that. It's really funny. Nope, I'm going to put it on the other side, right? I'll just splash a little bit of water on first and then go for it. Name and the year. Let's say always important. But I'm not finished the glass yet, of course, I'm not finished the engraving. Now I'm pointing out um, the bottom of the trunk obviously looks quite unfinished. And so I'm going to do a little bit of work on that. What have I got? I've got a white Arkansas stone again. looking at the <laughs> I keep turning my head because I'm forever looking at the um, monitor of the camera to make sure that I've got the jolly thing in the middle um, and I'm not blocking it out I seem to be getting much better at it <laughs> oh dear. Uh, honestly anyway so I'm just kind of putting a, a, a half tone finish to the bottom of this trunk. And I've decided to take a slightly bigger um, white Arkansas. I don't even know if you can get these anymore. 
Um, gosh, I used to get such beautiful big white Arkansas stones. Um, but you can't get them anymore. They're mainly the smaller ones. I'm still looking to see what it might need. Right, so I've got a China graph pencil it's um well called the glass chrome here but um they can also be they are also called uh china graph and i'm just going to experiment and see if a little bit of grass underneath this tree um and it's quite long grass you can make it up as you go along of course um having a look through to see how much is required uh, we want to do a little bit more there And of course, if you don't like the effect, just wash it off. But I'm thinking, yeah, that might work. I love the way I do little hand signals for you. <laughs> for, um, even though I'm not speaking when I'm engraving, I'm doing, I'm thinking of what I'm saying now. So, yeah. Okay, decision made yet? Come on. <laughs> oh, it's not difficult, these. Okay, decision made. And I've got a white Arkansas again. Slightly different shape. This is the, this is quite, quite a normal shape, white Arkansas. And I'm just stroking it um, over the, the China Graph pencil lines obviously not exactly the same I'm just doing roughly the same um, I, ah and I'm putting the little heads of the grass um, the, the <laughs> what is right at this very moment making me have very itchy eyes every year at this time <laughs> because it's springtime and um, as soon as the grass heads come out and the pollen starts flying about I have the most dreadful hay fever um, and giving me itchy eyes so I've added a very very faint you can't really see it but I've added some little tops to the grass it's just an impression that's all right here we are uh, a very old stone and I'm going to flatten the top of this white Arkansas um, and that is because I want it to be able to cut into the glass a little bit more efficiently um, and I've just noticed my water dripping merrily um, at the top of the screen there. <laughs> All right, it wasn't flat enough so right so I'm flattening it off again onto a stone there we are just making sure that it's even and now I'm going to cut into the um, trunk and it's instantly going to make slightly darker lines and then as they sort of come out of the trunk and into the clear background they will be um, visible white lines it's quite clever so we have grass that's growing in the front obviously you've got to have grass in the front of the tree as well um, So for this I will be pressing a little bit harder to cut through that area of engraving. And I think I've just noticed, did I notice? No, not yet. Um, that grass needs to come down more. All right. I've got um, very little uh, rubber that I'm just very roughly darkening um, that area. I'm trying to get into, I should have sharpened it actually, and gone into the grooves of the gra grass to make them a little bit darker, but I've been a bit lazy and, and um, just going over the top. But I will rectify that because I want, obviously, the, the tree in the background, I want to look a little bit lighter. So to rectify that very 
quickly. I do believe I'm going to get a stone. Yes, blue stone. Um, and I'm going to lay it flat over that and rub lightly. And what that will do is that will pick up the tree in the background because the grass is deeper. And it because I'm laying it flat, it's not going to go into the grass grooves. And that way I've instantly got back the light in the tree. And I've realized that this grass is it really needed to become to come down a little bit more the base of it so that it's it's more level. Um, it's just rough it, it um, but it was floating up into the sky a little bit earlier on and here I've decided to do a couple of much deeper much clearer uh, bits of grass into the tree And this rubber again, which actually doesn't look like it's centered, to be honest. Need to have a look at that. And I'm running that over the ridges. You can see how it'll pick up the ridge immediately, making a shadow, which is incredibly useful. And brings that branch out to the front. I've also got, um, it looks like a funny shape because I've made a hole in the tree there, which we will define. Um, We'll define a bit more now. And um, small diamond, working dry. It's nice and sharp anyway, so um, I'm just adding a few highlights. As you, you can imagine, a little squirrel living in that hole in the tree. Wiggling some highlights here and there. If you imagine where the sun might be shining on the gnarly bits. And I need to switch that water off before it drowns out the whole system. <laughs> Dripping away, I can't believe I didn't even notice it. Okay, having another look. Rather nice. So there's nothing stopping you putting an owl sitting on the branch. Maybe we'll do that. Or a little animal sitting, we could do a hare sitting at the bottom on the front or something like that. Um, and there you go. So I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you engrave lots of trees. Um, such a lovely subject. Thanks for watching. Cheerio!